Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Enermax Revolution 85 Plus 1050 Watt Power Supply. What's included is the user's manual, Velcro cable tie downs, a pouch for the modular leads, power cord, and the power supply. The Revolution 85 Plus line of power supplies are currently available in wattages ranging from 850 to 1250. I'll be reviewing the 1050 watt model, which is more than enough power even for hardcore computer systems. Now how is this wattage determined? Well to understand that, you need to know what rails are. Rails are basically well-regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use. And there are essentially two different rails, the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. In this particular case, the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 170 watts and the 12 volt rail is 1044 watts, which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. Also, some might be interested to know the peak amps on each rail. Well, the plus 3.3 volt and the plus 12 volt rails are both 25 amps each. And there are also six plus 12 volt rails, which are 30 amps each with a combined power of 87 amps. There are a couple of important things to remember when selecting a power supply. The first is wattage. Determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware you will be installing. Generally speaking, a medium to high end gaming rig would require a 500 to 700 watt power supply. For a hardcore system, select a power supply that's around 800 watts. If, however, you are building an extreme gaming rig with a top of the line multiple video card setup with lots of other hardware, select a power supply supply that's 1000 watts or greater. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficient at typical load. The efficiency of this power supply is rated between 85 to 91% at 20 to 100% load. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has APFC. APFC, or Active Power Factor Correction, is something that also assists the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and it allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply has APFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, 80 plus, NVIDIA SLI, and ATI Crossfire. Many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications. This power supply meets all of these certifications, the 80 plus Silver, Crossfire, and NVIDIA SLI certifications. Sixth, look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors. This ensures a much more reliable product than a power supply with low-grade capacitors. This power supply uses Japanese capacitors. Finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Also consider a power supply that has a modular design because it reduces the cable mess inside the case. Let's have a closer look at this power supply. Since this is a high wattage power supply, it's fairly long, so it might not fit in some mid tower and most likely will not fit in home theater PC and small form factor cases. It has a rough paint finish with a black red color theme and the housing is steel. Here's the power cable connection and the power switch. There is also a power guard status LED, which is green when turned on and everything is normal, orange when in standby mode, and red when the power supply protection is active. This power supply uses AirGuard, a patented air intake with optimal aerodynamical design reducing noisy air turbulence. To achieve this, all they've done is bevel the edges around the fan so when the fan intakes cool air, it doesn't cause noisy turbulence. This is a very simple but effective way of reducing fan noise. Note that when the system is turned off, heat guard will keep the power supply running for 30 to 60 seconds to dissipate the remaining system heat, prolonging lifetime. 
They include a load controlled quiet 135 millimeter fan. So the more load on the power supply, the faster the fan spins. This fan and the honeycomb ventilation ensures maximum cooling so the power supply should remain cool in almost any environment. This power supply has lots of leads, but the main motherboard leads, as well as the PCI Express leads and a fan RPM lead are hardwired into the power supply and can't be removed. The remaining are sleeved modular leads, which is excellent because you only need to use the ones required for your particular setup. This reduces the cable mess inside the case and it also increases airflow. This power supply is also built for most upcoming CPUs and video cards by using 12-pin sockets for possible connector changes. It also complies to the latest EPS 12-volt power design guides for compatibility by using six massive 12-volt rails for perfect load distribution and by zero load design for C6 state and hybrid mode functions. Additionally, this power supply is server compatible, supporting multiple CPUs, video cards, workstations, server motherboards, lots of hard drives and memory. Finally, have a listen to the 135mm fan. If you're in the market for a high wattage power supply, but you need it to be very efficient, this is definitely it. This power supply performs exceptionally well and is jam-packed full of fantastic features. It also comes with a very quiet 135mm fan. Overall, this is a 100% kick-ass product. Until next time, take care.